Hello, Nation. Today we're going to talk about the many different faces of type 2 diabetes. Now, it's so important to get the right diagnosis, and there's a lot more than just type 1 and type 2. I could have used different fingers to describe those, but I'm being very cordial today. Let's talk about the most common type of diabetes, type 2. You typically get it when you're older. You have other associated features such as weight problems, hypertension, cholesterol issues, and type 2 diabetes is the one that's really increasing in epidemic proportions around the globe. The cause of it is a genetic abnormality leading to insulin resistance. The insulin that's produced doesn't work well. The tissues of the body are resistant. And you have to take either oral medications and or insulin. And type 2 diabetes accounts for approximately 85 to 90 percent of the diabetes around the world. Okay, I'm not going to spend too much time. We all know that. Let's next talk about gestational diabetes. Usually occurs in women. I hope you got that. Uh, and gestational diabetes, obviously, you get diabetes when you're pregnant. And that type of diabetes is very similar to type 2. Uh, the hormones that go up very high during the first, second, and third trimester of pregnancy work against insulin and lead to high blood sugars. So if you have a genetic tendency and you get pregnant, you may get diabetes during your delivery, and then you may or may not get it later on in life. So, type, so gestational is very close to type 2. Let's talk about type 1 diabetes. That's the type that I have. I've had type 1 diabetes since 1970. And type 1 diabetes only accounts for 5 to 10% of the diabetics in the world. It's an autoimmune condition. For some reason, my body produced antibodies that attacked my own pancreas when I was 15 years old. Autoimmunity and insulin resistance, the cause of type 1 and type 2, are completely different. And that's why the screening is different, genetic counseling is different, the therapies are different to a, to a major degree. And obviously for type 1, you need to take insulin. Every single person on this earth with type 1 has to take insulin. And that's because the insulin producing cells of our pancreas have been destroyed. Now let's go to LADA, L-A-D-A, -A, Latent Autoimmune Diabetes in Adults. What is that? I can tell you it's the most misdiagnosis in diabetes and it's fairly common. It's when you get type 1 diabetes later on in life. Now, those folks present differently than the typical type 1 like I was when I was 15. I got sick, I got thrown into the intensive care unit, I had ketoacidosis, but these folks that get type 1 later on in life have slower pancreatic cell destruction. So they actually can respond to oral medications. A lot of the doctors think they have type 2 diabetes because they're older. I had a patient who just came down with LADA who was 74 years old. And so it's really important to get the right diagnosis because guess what? The pills don't work for very long. You need insulin right away and it can lead to a lot of frustration on the side of the patient as well as the provider. Now, believe it or not, you can get type 1 and type 2 diabetes together. We call that hybrid or double diabetes. I feel bad, but it's true. Both types of diabetes are not mutually exclusive. You can get type 1 as a kid, but if both your parents have type 2, or if type 2 runs in your family at the age of 30, 40, you might start to develop central obesity, high blood pressure, abnormal cholesterol. Your insulin requirements may start to go up. And guess what? You have both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. I have several patients in that category. Now there's a whole list of others. There's tropical diabetes, there's MODI, mature onset diabetes of the young. And I think you know, we don't need to go into that now, but the last type that I want to mention is very common, the type 3 diabetic. That's someone who is living or caring for someone with diabetes but doesn't have it themselves. We also call them the diabetic police.